Introduction In the heart of a serene town lived the Johnson family, a tight-knit trio comprising Mr. and Mrs. Johnson and their vibrant daughter, Emily. Their days were filled with laughter, shared meals, and the simple joys of family life. However, unbeknownst to them, the tranquil rhythm of their existence was about to face an unforeseen disruption. As Emily ventured into a new school year, the prospect of forging new friendships and navigating the challenges of high school brought a sparkle to her eyes. Little did she know that the seemingly innocuous path she was treading would soon lead her into a harrowing journey of pain and struggle. In the ebullient atmosphere of her high school, Emily found companionship with a group of classmates who exuded charm and charisma. Drawn to their vivacity, she became part of their inner circle, blissfully unaware of the shadows that lurked beneath the surface. The narrative takes a poignant turn when Emily's newfound friends, with their magnetic influence, introduce her to the dark allure of drugs. Peer pressure, a formidable force for even the strongest willed, began to exert its insidious grip on Emily's life. In a moment of vulnerability, she succumbed to the allure of a seemingly harmless experiment unwittingly setting in motion a series of events that would shake the very foundation of her family's happiness. As the days unfolded, subtle changes in Emily's behavior became apparent to her parents, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson. The once bubbling energy that defined their daughter began to wane, replaced by a veil of secrecy and withdrawal. Her academic performance, once a source of pride for the family, saw a precipitous decline. The signs were there, but the true cause remained shrouded in mystery. Concerned whispers reached the ears of Emily's teachers, prompting the school officials to step in. A meeting was convened, bringing together the worried parents and the concerned educators. In that room, the heartbreaking truth about Emily's descent into drug addiction was laid bare, leaving Mr. and Mrs. Johnson grappling with the shock of a reality they never imagined. Recognizing the urgency of the situation, the school officials, in collaboration with social services, embarked on a mission to salvage Emily's future. The intervention marked the beginning of a transformative journey for the Johnson family as they grappled with the painful realization that their daughter was in the clutches of a formidable adversary. In the subsequent chapters, we delve into the multifaceted tale of resilience, sacrifice, and the unwavering determination of a family and community to reclaim the life of a beloved daughter. It is a story that transcends the bounds of fiction, offering a sobering reflection on the very real struggles faced by individuals and families grappling with the scourge of drug addiction. Join us as we navigate the highs and lows of this family's odyssey, a journey that takes them from the depths of despair to the triumphant summit of recovery. Chapter 1. A Happy Family in the quaint tapestry of suburban life, the Johnsons stood as a beacon of happiness and togetherness. Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, a couple whose love had weathered the storms of time, found solace and joy in the warm embrace of their family. At the heart of this idyllic haven was their vivacious daughter, Emily, a radiant high school girl whose laughter echoed through the corridors of their cozy home. The Johnson residence, nestled in the embrace of a quiet town, exuded an air of contentment. Its walls bore witness to the countless shared moments of joy, from weekend game nights to the aroma of Mrs. Johnson's home-cooked meals wafting through the air. 
Theirs was a family built on a foundation of love, trust, and the simple pleasures of life. Emily, the apple of her parents' eyes, was the embodiment of youthful exuberance. Her days were a tapestry woven with the threads of school adventures, innocent dreams, and the unwavering support of her family. As a high school student, she navigated the challenges of adolescence with a contagious enthusiasm, making friends easily and approaching life with a wide-eyed curiosity. The Johnson household, a haven of love and laughter, thrived on the harmonious symphony of shared experiences. From Mr. Johnson's paternal wisdom to Mrs. Johnson's nurturing presence, the family created a sanctuary where Emily could blossom. Their evenings were punctuated with the echoes of Emily's tales from high school, each story a testament to the vibrant tapestry of her teenage years. In the heart of this familial bliss, the Johnsons crafted a refuge against the trials of the world. Their weekends were a canvas for exploration and bonding, whether it be family hikes, movie nights, or the occasional impromptu dance party in the living room. It was a sanctuary where the stresses of daily life were momentarily set aside, replaced by the warmth of familial love and shared laughter. As the sun dipped below the horizon, Casting a warm glow on the Johnson residence, the family gathered for their nightly rituals. Dinner tables became arenas for spirited conversations, where the day's triumphs and tribulations were shared. Emily, animated and full of life, regaled her parents with tales of school friendships, academic achievements, and the dreams that danced in her youthful eyes. In the serene ambience of their quiet town, the Johnsons were the embodiment of a happy family, a testament to the enduring power of love and unity. Little did they know that their tranquil existence was about to face an unexpected challenge, one that would test the strength of their familial bonds and resilience. The shadows of a looming tragedy were yet to cast their pall over the Johnsons, but for now, in Chapter 1, the stage was set for the tale of a family that stood on the precipice of a life-altering journey. Chapter 2 – New School Adventures The first day of a new school year dawned, ushering in a sense of anticipation and excitement for Emily Johnson. Dressed in the crisp uniform of her high school, a mix of nerves and enthusiasm bubbled within her as she stepped into the bustling halls that would become the backdrop for the next chapter of her life. The corridors echoed with the hum of students reconnecting after the summer break, exchanging stories of vacations and adventures. For Emily, this was a canvas of possibilities, chance to forge new friendships and create lasting memories. As she navigated the labyrinth of lockers and classrooms, her eyes sparkled with the optimism of youth. It didn't take long for Emily to catch the attention of her peers. Her infectious smile and genuine warmth drew people toward her like a magnet. In the kaleidoscope of high school dynamics, Emily found herself quickly surrounded by a group of classmates who exuded a welcoming aura. They were a diverse ensemble of personalities, each contributing to the vibrant tapestry of this newfound camaraderie. Among them were Sarah, an aspiring artist with a penchant for creativity, and Jake, a sports enthusiast with an infectious zeal for life. Together, they formed a close-knit circle that embraced Emily with open arms. 
The promise of adventure hung in the air as this eclectic group embarked on the journey of a new school year, their shared laughter echoing through the hallways. The initial days were a whirlwind of introductions, shared classes, and the forging of connections that transcended the boundaries of the academic curriculum. The cafeteria became a hub of animated conversations and shared lunches, as the group navigated the social landscape of high school together. In the midst of this newfound camaraderie, Emily felt a sense of belonging that resonated deep within her. The mundane routines of school life transformed into vibrant experiences, from group study sessions to impromptu after-school excursions. As the weeks unfolded, Emily's world expanded, and her sense of identity became intertwined with the colorful mosaic of personalities that surrounded her. However, amid the laughter and shared adventures, subtle undercurrents began to emerge within the group. Unbeknownst to Emily, the dynamics were about to take an unexpected turn, leading her down a path fraught with challenges and unforeseen consequences. Little did she know that the choices made in the name of camaraderie would soon cast a shadow over the sunny days of new school adventures. The stage was set for a tale where friendships would be tested, and the resilience of youth would be confronted by the harsh realities of an unforeseen future. Chapter 3. The Wrong Crowd As the school year unfolded, Emily found herself ensconced in a tight-knit circle of friends who, on the surface, radiated warmth and camaraderie. Little did she suspect that beneath the veneer of laughter and shared adventures, a darker undercurrent lurked, one that would cast a formidable shadow over her once promising high school experience. Sarah, Jake, and the others, once beacons of friendship, harbored a secret predilection for unhealthy habits. The seeds of this revelation were sown one fateful day when, after school, the group retreated to a secluded spot where whispers of rebellion lingered in the air. Unbeknownst to Emily, her life was about to take an unforeseen turn. It started innocuously enough, with a casual suggestion to try something new. The air was thick with a mixture of curiosity and trepidation as Emily's friends introduced her to the forbidden allure of drugs. At first, she hesitated, her moral compass warring with the desire to fit in. However, the persuasive voices around her drowned out the whispers of reason, and Emily found herself standing at the crossroads of a crucial decision. The pressure mounted as her friends, each bearing the weight of their own vices, goaded her to partake in this forbidden experiment. The group dynamics shifted, and a palpable tension hung in the air. In a moment of vulnerability, Emily succumbed to the relentless persuasion, choosing the dangerous path laid out before her. As the first tendrils of the substance took hold, the group's laughter morphed into a disconcerting symphony of altered perceptions. Unwittingly, Emily had taken a step into the abyss, propelled by the deceptive allure of acceptance and a misguided sense of camaraderie. The consequences of that fateful decision rippled through the fabric of Emily's life. The once clear boundaries between right and wrong blurred, and the promise of newfound friendships became entangled with the perils of a clandestine world. Emily, now a reluctant participant in a journey she never intended to embark upon, grappled with the weight of her choices. In Chapter 3, 
The narrative takes a samba turn as Emily confronts the harsh reality of peer pressure and the consequences of succumbing to the allure of a toxic influence. The wrong crowd, once a source of comfort and companionship, transforms into architects of a perilous path that threatens to unravel the very fabric of her existence. As Emily navigates the stormy seas of adolescence, the choices made in the name of friendship will set the stage for a formidable challenge, one that will test her resilience, the strength of familial bonds, and the indomitable spirit required to break free from the clutches of a dangerous descent. Chapter 4 A Signs of Trouble in the wake of that pivotal day in the secluded spot where peer pressure took the form of a dangerous invitation, the once lustrous fabric of Emily's life began to unravel. The weeks unfolded like a series of ominous chapters, each one revealing the insidious consequences of her foray into the world of drugs. A subtle shift occurred in Emily's demeanor, a transformation that escaped the notice of those closest to her. The radiant girl who once graced the Johnson household with laughter and enthusiasm now carried a clandestine burden. She became increasingly withdrawn, her once joyful countenance replaced by a mask of secrecy that concealed the turmoil brewing within. The first noticeable sign was her newfound pangshang for secrecy. Conversations with Emily, once open and free-flowing, now carried the weight of unspoken words. The vibrant tales from school were replaced by evasive responses, leaving Mr. and Mrs. Johnson perplexed and concerned. They sensed a growing distance but couldn't fathom the cause. Simultaneously, the academic beacon that had guided Emily's path began to flicker. Grades, once a source of pride for both student and parents, plummeted into uncharted territory. Assignments went unfinished, and the sparkle of academic achievement dimmed in the face of an insidious distraction that had taken root in Emily's life. Neglected responsibilities at home added another layer to the growing concern. The once diligent daughter began to falter in her household duties. Chores were forgotten, and the echoes of her once familiar presence in the family rituals became increasingly muted. Emily's retreat into a world of secrecy extended beyond the school gates, casting a shadow over the very heart of the Johnson household. Despite their growing unease, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson found themselves in a perplexing maze, unable to decipher the cause of their daughter's altered behavior. Late-night conversations in hushed tones, furrowed brows, and shared glances of concern became the backdrop to their evenings. As the realization dawned that something was amiss in Emily's world. In the midst of this familial confusion, Emily's struggle remained shrouded in silence. The clandestine world of drugs had woven its threads into the very fabric of her existence, and the signs of trouble were the silent cries for help that echoed beneath the surface. Chapter 4 unfolds as a poignant exploration of a family's gradual awakening to the storms brewing in their midst. It is a chapter where the unspoken language of behavioral changes becomes a haunting refrain, signaling the descent into a troubling reality that threatens to engulf not only Emily but the entire Johnson family. The narrative inches closer to the precipice setting the stage for a confrontation with the harsh truths lurking in the shadows of their once happy home. Chapter 5 Intervention The sun hung low in the sky, casting long shadows across the school grounds as the academic year progressed. In the midst of this seemingly ordinary day, 
A watchful eye caught wind of the subtle but unmistakable changes in Emily's behavior. It was her teacher, Mrs. Anderson, a perceptive educator with a genuine concern for her students. Mrs. Anderson, with years of experience and a keen understanding of the nuances of adolescent behavior, couldn't ignore the alarm bells ringing in her mind. The vivacious and engaged student she once knew had morphed into a shadow of herself, with the weight of an unseen burden etched in her eyes. Recognizing the gravity of the situation, Mrs. Anderson resolved to take action, not merely as an educator but as a compassionate advocate for Emily's well-being. With a sense of urgency, Mrs. Anderson approached the school officials, sharing her observations and the concerns that had taken root in her heart. Together, they decided that Emily's well-being necessitated a concerted effort, a collaborative intervention to unearth the root cause of her distress. The wheels of the intervention were set into motion, and a meeting was convened a meeting that would bring together the concerned school officials and the unsuspecting parents, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson. As they entered the room, the atmosphere crackled with a mixture of tension and shared concern, the air thick with the weight of an impending revelation. Seated across from one another, the school officials delicately broached the subject, unraveling the layers of Emily's altered behavior. Mrs. Anderson, her voice laced with a genuine worry that transcended her role as an educator, painted a poignant picture of the changes she had observed in Emily, the withdrawal, the declining academic performance, the unspoken cries for help. As the details unfolded, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson found themselves navigating the labyrinth of emotions, shock, disbelief, and ultimately, the sinking realization that their daughter's struggles were not confined to the walls of their home. The meeting transformed into a crucible of empathy, where the collective concern for Emily became the catalyst for a collaborative effort to rescue her from the depths of her ordeal. In this pivotal chapter, the narrative pivots toward the collaborative efforts of the school officials and the parents. It is a chapter that explores the delicate balance between respect for familial privacy and the urgency of addressing a crisis that transcends the confines of the home. The intervention becomes a lifeline for Emily, a glimmer of hope in the face of a storm that threatens to shatter the fragile equilibrium of her existence. The stage is set for a collective endeavor that will reshape the trajectory of Emily's life and the resilience of a family grappling with the unknown. Chapter 6 Facing the Truth the meeting room echoed with a palpable tension as the truth unfolded like a haunting symphony of revelations. Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, unsuspecting and hopeful parents, sat across from the earnest faces of the school officials. The air was charged with a sense of urgency, the gravity of the situation hanging over them like an impending storm. As the school officials delicately broached the subject, Mrs. Anderson, Emily's teacher, recounted her observations with a compassionate precision. The subtle signs of change, the downward spiral in academic performance, the alarming withdrawal, all pointed to a stark reality that could no longer be ignored. The unspoken words hung in the air heavy with the weight of a truth that would alter the course of the Johnson family's narrative. With a heavy heart and a solemn acknowledgement of the shared responsibility for Emily's well-being, the school officials revealed the darkest secret that had infiltrated the teenager's life, her involvement with drugs. 
Shock washed over Mr. and Mrs. Johnson like an icy wave, disbelief and heartbreak etched on their faces. The sanctuary of their happy family now confronted a threat they never saw coming. The room, once a haven of familial security, became a battlefield of emotions. Anguish, anger, and profound sadness intermingled as the Johnsons grappled with the revelation. The dream of a picture-perfect family began to fracture, giving way to the painful reality that their daughter was ensnared in the insidious web of substance abuse. Amidst the turmoil, a collective decision ripened, a decision born from love, concern, and the unyielding determination to rescue Emily from the clutches of a perilous path. The shockwaves of the revelation galvanized Mr. and Mrs. Johnson into immediate action, as they vowed to confront this crisis head-on. In the crucible of truth, the school officials offered their support, outlining a plan to address Emily's situation. Social services would be enlisted, creating a collaborative effort that extended beyond the school gates and into the heart of the Johnson home. It was a moment of reckoning, where the family faced the formidable challenge of navigating the turbulent waters of addiction, armed with the collective strength of love and the unwavering commitment to restore their daughter's well-being. Chapter 6, marked by the raw intensity of the truth revealed, becomes a pivotal juncture in the Johnson's journey. It is a chapter where shock gives way to resolve and heartbreak becomes the crucible for a united front against the adversity that has infiltrated their lives. As they leave the meeting room, the path forward is uncertain, but the Johnsons embark on this journey with a shared determination to pull their daughter back from the brink, reclaiming the essence of the happy family that had once been their sanctuary. Chapter 7. Social Services Involvement the decision to involve social services marked the dawn of a collaborative effort to address Emily's plight with a comprehensive and compassionate approach. The school officials, recognizing the complexity of the situation, reached out to these dedicated professionals to provide an additional layer of support for the Johnson family. In the aftermath of the revelation, a social worker, a compassionate guide in navigating the tumultuous waters of addiction, entered the Johnsons' lives. With a wealth of experience in dealing with the multifaceted challenges of families in crisis, the social worker became an essential ally in the fight to reclaim Emily from the clutches of drug addiction. The initial meetings were delicate, characterized by a careful dance between professional expertise and the fragile emotions of the Johnson family. The social worker, armed with empathy and a commitment to understanding the unique dynamics at play, sought to unravel the layers of complexity surrounding Emily's situation. Together with Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, the social worker embarked on the arduous task of creating a customized plan tailored to address Emily's specific needs. This plan extended beyond the academic realm, encompassing the intricate interplay of familial relationships, emotional well-being, and the intricate dance between the external pressures faced by a high school student. Educational interventions were set in motion to provide additional support for Emily's academic struggles. The social worker collaborated closely with school counselors to ensure a nurturing environment that would foster her recovery while addressing the challenges posed by academic setbacks. It was a holistic approach recognizing that true rehabilitation required a comprehensive understanding of Emily's life beyond the academic sphere. Family counseling sessions became a cornerstone of this intervention. 
The social worker, acting as a mediator and guide, facilitated open and honest communication within the Johnson household. These sessions provided a space for the family to confront the impact of addiction on their relationships, fostering healing and rebuilding the foundations of trust that had been eroded by the secrecy surrounding Emily's struggles. Beyond the confines of the home, the social worker liaised with support groups and external resources, forging connections that would serve as additional pillars of strength for Emily and her family. The collaboration extended to community-based programs, where the Johnsons found solace in the shared experiences of others navigating the tumultuous terrain of addiction recovery. Chapter 7 becomes a chapter of collaboration and support, where the Johnsons are not alone in their fight. The involvement of social services injects a new dimension of expertise and understanding into the narrative, offering a lifeline for a family grappling with the complexities of addiction. As the plan takes shape, the Johnsons, guided by the compassionate hand of the social worker, stand poised on the precipice of a journey that will test the limits of their resilience and the strength of their familial bonds. Chapter 8 – A Fresh Start As the Johnson family grappled with the complexities of Emily's journey through addiction recovery, a crucial decision loomed on the horizon, one that would necessitate both sacrifice and hope. After exhaustive deliberation, the realization crystallized that a change of environment might be the linchpin in Emily's path to recovery. The family, fortified by the guidance of the social worker, arrived at a transformative decision to embark on a journey to a distant city where the promise of a fresh start awaited. The prospect of leaving behind the familiar contours of their town stirred a kaleidoscope of emotions within the Johnsons. It was a decision born not out of defeat, but rather fueled by an unwavering determination to provide Emily with an environment conducive to healing. The distant city, a tabula rosa awaiting the strokes of a new chapter, held the promise of renewal a canvas upon which the Johnsons could paint the hues of recovery and resilience. The move, orchestrated in collaboration with the social worker, unfolded as a carefully orchestrated endeavor. The logistical challenges were met with a sense of purpose, as the family prepared to bid farewell to the town that had witnessed both their joys and sorrows. The decision to change schools, while daunting, held the potential to sever the ties that bound Emily to the shadows of her past. In the distant city, a new school awaited, with unfamiliar faces and unexplored corridors. It was a place where the echoes of Emily's previous struggles had yet to permeate, offering her a chance to redefine herself beyond the stigma of her past. The academic setting, carefully chosen with the support of the social worker, became a crucible for her transformation, a realm where the pursuit of knowledge intersected with the journey of personal renewal. The social worker, a steadfast companion in this odyssey, continued to play a pivotal role. Their presence extended beyond the town's limits as they facilitated the integration of the Johnsons into the fabric of the new community. Support groups, counselling resources, and connections with local organisations became the scaffolding upon which the family could lean as they navigated the uncharted territory of their fresh start. As they settled into their new surroundings, the Johnsons discovered that the distant city offered more than a mere change of scenery. It became a sanctuary where the wounds of the past could heal, and the family could forge ahead with a collective determination to rebuild what had been fractured. 
the move symbolized not only a geographic transition but a symbolic rebirth, a shedding of the old to make way for the new. In Chapter 8, the narrative unfolds against the backdrop of transition, portraying the family's embrace of change as a catalyst for Emily's recovery. The distant city becomes a tableau where hope takes root, and the contours of a new beginning emerge. As the Johnsons stand at the threshold of their fresh start, the story prepares to pivot toward the transformative journey that awaits in this uncharted terrain. Chapter 9 Road to Recovery In the embrace of the new city, the Johnsons embarked on a transformative journey, a journey that held the promise of redemption for Emily and the restoration of their once happy family. This chapter became the crucible of recovery, where the echoes of addiction were gradually drowned out by the cadence of healing, resilience, and renewal. The first step in Emily's road to recovery involved seeking professional help. The new city, with its array of healthcare resources, provided a fertile ground for interventions tailored to address the complex web of challenges woven by addiction. Therapists, counselors, and medical professionals joined forces, creating a support network that encircled Emily in the safety of their expertise. Support groups, both within the therapeutic setting and the broader community, became integral to Emily's journey. Here, in the shared experiences of others grappling with addiction, she found a mirror reflecting the pain triumphs, and the collective strength of those navigating similar paths. The power of shared narratives became a cornerstone in dismantling the isolation that addiction often fosters. The social worker, a constant presence from the town to the distant city, continued to guide the Johnsons through the labyrinth of recovery. They facilitated connections with local support services ensuring that the family remained enveloped in a cocoon of understanding and encouragement. Together, they worked to reinforce the resilience of the Johnsons, reminding them that recovery was not an isolated endeavor, but a collective voyage. The new school environment, carefully chosen as a haven for Emily's fresh start, played a crucial role in her recovery. The educators and peers, unaware of her tumultuous past, embraced her with open hearts. Academic pursuits became not only a pathway to knowledge, but a scaffold for rebuilding self-esteem and fostering a sense of accomplishment. The school's commitment to a supportive atmosphere contributed to the cultivation of a positive environment where Emily could flourish. Central to Emily's recovery was the unwavering support of her parents. Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, now armed with a deeper understanding of addiction and equipped with the tools provided by counseling, became pillars of strength. Their commitment to the long and arduous road of recovery was a testament to the enduring bonds of familial love. Together, they navigated their ups and downs, weathering the storms and cherishing the victories, both big and small. In the crucible of recovery, Emily learned profound lessons about making healthy choices and the importance of surrounding herself with positive influences. The new city, with its fresh perspectives and a community invested in her well-being, offered fertile ground for these crucial realizations. Through therapy, support groups, and the nurturing environment of the new school, Emily cultivated resilience and strength that became the bedrock of her transformation. As the seasons of recovery unfolded, Emily emerged not as a victim of circumstance but as a shining example of resilience. Her smile, once dimmed by the shadows of addiction, now radiated with a newfound happiness. The Johnson family, 
weathered, but united, stood as living proof that even in the face of the darkest storms, there existed the potential for rebirth. Chapter 9 concludes the poignant narrative of the Johnson family's odyssey through addiction and recovery. It stands as a testament to the transformative power of love, support, and the unwavering commitment to forging ahead on the road to healing. In the story's final pages, Emily's journey becomes a beacon, a beacon of hope for others navigating similar paths, a testament to the indomitable spirit that can emerge from the crucible of adversity.